I just wanted to answer any questions for you guys, if you had any, or, uh, yep. Nets to Energy, and there's a couple uh, innovative. Oh, thank you. There's a couple innovative ideas that they're thinking of for um, on the governmental side with NOAA that they've been working on. But you can't burning it; it really just emits more toxins out in the environment. And so um, it's kind of crazy to think that every single piece of plastic ever created on this planet is still somewhere. Um, either it doesn't completely break it down because it's not biodegradable. So Considering all the plastic we touch every single day of our lives, it, it's, it's mind-boggling. And that was really the crux of how we started, or how I started doing the research for this film. So, but thank you. It's been a long, long ride. <laughs> it started out as a um, pitch for current TV where I was working at, and uh, that was 2006, so about seven years ago. Um, and of course, as everyone knows, uh, filmmakers and uh, film buffs of doc indie filmmaking, it takes forever um, to take from inception to actually being able to get funds to shoot it and then put it together and then post and, and bring it to you guys. So it's really, it's because you guys are such big supporters and coming out here and spending a little bit of time on your weekend to, to come out. I really appreciate it, especially for Boston Film Festival and to, Robin and Allison and Nitra and the whole crew. Um, it's just, it means the world to an independent filmmaker because without you guys and without an audience to show it to, it's really nothing, you know? So hopefully, hopefully it was um, oh, eye opening. <laughs> um, you had a question? Yeah. <laughs> Disposable plastic for the next two weeks, and I will sign that says no single use plastics. 
and to post that on our Facebook or our Twitter at Plastic Me Dice, and we have a little hashtag so we can find you. And then in two weeks' time, you post another picture that you said you did it, and then we send you a fun swag, um, which is a clean canteen bottle, and also this fun little, from actually the bag monster, Andy Keller, the, he's the founder of Chico Bag, and this is actually made out of 100% uh, recycled PET bottles, and it's called the Repeat Bag. And it actually lasts for a long time, because um, the one that I've had prior to this lasted for about four years. So it's kind of, it's, it's like that we're trying to just, you know, give people the ownership of the film. Um, yeah, I made it, but at the same time, it would have not been possible with so much help and support from other people. And I, I hope that everyone would be able to take ownership of it. And really, it's about spreading awareness first and having people understand what's going on. Um, and, and for you guys, that's, you know, I hope that now you know, and so that is that responsibility to take forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, first off, I would like to applaud you Thank you. You know, by watching the film, you know, it's obvious you've been doing a lot of work, pulling up the nets and traveling all over, but unfortunately there's uh, somebody working on the other side who doesn't have to do all the work you're doing. They just have to take the right people to lunch, and they're the, lo the uh, lobbyist. Yeah, the lobbyist. The same lobbyist that for so many years have uh, made it that tobacco can still kill millions. And again, I applaud your effort and your optimism, but until we can really curtail the power that these lobbyists have, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough fight. Well, I think one of the cool things about social media um, is that we can make those changes, and it empowers the, the people and individuals to really do the change. Because if you see how tobacco, um, it took a while. I mean, it's a curve, and it takes a while, and we're the early adopters right now of this, um, to to really catapult it forward uh, to the masses of people. And even with what Massachusetts is trying to do, and I know that there's been a lot of um, attempts to move legislation forward, but it's one of the six states um, in the country that's trying to push ban, or bag the bag banning legislation through. Nothing has been pushed through lately, or as of yet, but uh, there are also eight states that are trying to put a tax onto bags. Um, and I know we're vilifying bags and water bottles just because they're most ubiquitous, but it's also packaging as well. Um, there's a lot of unnecessary packaging that goes into things that consumers, we don't have a say over, but you know, that it's, I, I fought a lot with this. I was like, but I'm just a consumer. When they're saying, like, well, if you don't want it, we won't make it. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't ask for you to put my hard drive in, like, this giant, massive plastic bubble before I get it, or, you know, styrofoam peanuts and whatnot. And so how do we combat that? Well, it starts with social change. It starts with just, you know, individual movement forward. I mean, even with the tobacco, it used to be cool, right, because media was constantly pushing how cool it was on television and in the movies and it's it's now, you know, banned from restaurants, it's now, you know, sort of like not. And and so I feel like in the same way we can do the same thing with disposable plastic and carry your own and um, just simple little things. I know it's hard to avoid. It's even for me to make this film, I am no green, you know, like I sometimes I have to take a plastic water bottle and I I kind of like, you know, <laughs> um, I feel horrible about it, but I, I sometimes have to do that as well. Or I've, I've been perched before and dehydrated. <laughs> I'm not going to take it, but it's very hard to avoid, so. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like a, a grassroots project, and uh, social media is powerful. And I know me, for one, tomorrow when I go to the grocery store and they say paper and plastic, I'm saying paper. Awesome. So, <laughs>
in the future? Because it seems like now there are, uh, you know, links, but they're still a little bit vague. Right. That's why it's so easy for the industry to fight this. Right. Uh, well, if, so, many, so many variables. If you look at scientific studies, you have to see who's funding these scientific studies as well. So um, when you're looking at specific studies, Professor Montesol is uh, in, he has a sort of independent study, but um, there would be no point in a plastic industry to fund a study that's not going to be in their favor. And when they talk about how bisphenol A is um, very small amounts enter your body, but you're constantly bombarded with that, how many receipts do we get a day? You know, how many times do you? It's it's accumulative. So even though yes, it passes, the, the industry has been saying that well, it passes through your system so quickly, it doesn't affect you. You know, you just like even if you take it in, it comes straight out. Uh, the other side, but it, within 24 hours. But if you're constantly being, um, you know, taking it in through either from you know carbon paper, airline tickets, receipts, to um, that's a new that's a new finding, um, or through the leaching of plastic water bottles when you have that weird plasticky taste when it's like heated up or in the car for too long. That's bisphenol A as well. It's very or we if things are microwaves. Um, so you know. Um, I personally don't need a scientific study to um, make me like, I mean, I don't need specific hard facts and numbers to know that this has an effect on my health um, because I can taste it in the water myself, you know, and I can feel it on my fingers myself and I know that it's in my blood. And so I think we can, they can argue all day long about numbers on the scientific standpoint, but I'm not a scientist and just personally for me, that's what really drives me to make my personal changes. I mean, everybody else, it's like, well, if I need the facts and numbers, I'm going to continue to live whatever way, you know, that's fine. Um, but hopefully, I would think from the consumer and the layman, as I am as well, that it's just kind of when I can taste the plastic in my water, that's when I feel like I need to change my personal ways. Um, so for, for the naysayers, yeah, they might need that. And um, unfortunately, there's not as much money put into that sort of independent studies and funding. But this phenol A um, in receipts in Japan, they've outlawed. I mean, they, they, they've, they've taken that out. You know, our FDA, um, I, I wouldn't bank on the FDA banning it anytime soon to, to make any change. But I think, again, it's about awareness. I think it's a four-pronged approach. People always ask, well, what do we do? Are we screwed? You know, and I think it's a four-pronged approach of awareness um, and education and then um, consumer responsibility, which is us doing our own parts to say no to refusing um, to making simple, small, habitual changes. Um, industry needs to take responsibility and owning up to changing their packaging ways and changing the ways that they, um, or what kind of materials that they use. And then it's also legislation. And so legislation, they, you know, I feel like we do have a voice, especially now, with the interwebs and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that. I mean, it's everything moves at such a fast click. It's about getting the attention, especially of um, uh, you know the next generation that will have to endure everything that they left behind as well. So I can only be optimistic. People say, why can't you, are you totally cynical? You want to like crawl into a corner and be position and just like not move. <laughs> um, but when they see faces, you know, and when I see people affected and they text me afterwards, like, dang it, now I said no to that, or whatever, and I keep thinking about it, or, you know, that, that's starting that gradual change that will hopefully um, move us and propel us forward, which is which is why I challenge you guys as well to, to go take that band, and I'm going to go check up on everybody on Twitter and Facebook in two weeks, so I might be stopping you. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. Going to a grocery store where they package everything in plastic and everything else, you forget that you can actually walk up to someone, a manager, someone, and say, "Look, I won't shop at your place because of this," and you walk away. And you think it doesn't make a difference, but then a lot of people do it. It makes yeah. a difference. You look at those yeah, yellow reviews too. <laughs> that put you know extra styrofoam and extra plastic around every color flower, around everything. It's like yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing too. It's just like, um, how do we make it so? It's not as sexy as like a panda dying or a tiger or whatnot, right? It's plastic. How do we put a face on it? How do we put, make it personal? And so I hope that just from, I felt like it was a little. Personally, I asked my editor to cut me 
me out a lot. <laughs> she said, no, you have to be in it for your story because it's a through line. And from a story standpoint, she kept it in there. And um, it's definitely been a labor of love. Um, and I always stand up and say we, and I always talk in this sort of we term. But um, I can, you know, it's not like I have imaginary friends. But I do have, like, a whole group slew behind this. I mean, including, like, just the support of the Boston Film Festival and just um, it takes a village to get this stuff up and running. And, and so, again, I'd like to just impart with you guys that now you are owners of the film as well. And I hope that you are able to take it and share it with other people. And we have a um, how to host a screening or how to bring bring it to a different part of the state if um, your friends want to see it and learn how to watch it. It's called Tug. And we, it's, it's all, it's very simple. It's, it's like an event writing evite sort of thing. Um, to set it up, and then um, where you know, like with our pledge against plastic for the two weeks campaign, hopefully they'll join us in the crusade. And then um, which I just made up these uh, T-shirts, which are in the back, um, and they goes back towards the company who makes them. They uh, plant a tree for every T-shirt, and it's also made out of 50% recycled um, polyester, which they can't make fully out of 100% PET because. It wouldn't hold with the fibers. And then yeah, I sourced it all that. I promise I did all my research for you. Um, and they also, 50% of the net profits go back to Feed the Children, which is their nonprofit. So everything is it's understanding um, that consumers are becoming more conscious of what we do, how we eat, what we buy, and all of that. And it's really, hopefully, just empowering you guys to be able to make the right decisions and you know carry it forward. So I really do appreciate you guys all coming out and supporting. And, um, what a great time to be in Boston, right? Yes. That rocks.